let's talk about artificial intelligence. Mm. Um, you gave some great commentary yesterday about artificial intelligence. So I think you could probably provide that level of in intellect or if you want to add some other spin on it. Um, but I'm just interested to see, you know, how you are currently using artificial intelligence and how people in their day to day life. Cause you know, everybody hears about AI, but they're like, how does this affect me? How does this impact me? Mm -hmm. And you know, people watch Earn Your Leisure to get information so they can actually, you know, help their situation when they watch Market Mondays. It's like, I want to learn something so I can go into the stock market and, and start investing. I want to learn something. I can go into the real estate. I want to learn something. And so yeah, what can we give them as for artificial intelligence? Well, you know, we're living in the age of AI. You know, I always like to start there. You know, the age of the AI is creating self-realization machines, right? You know, if you go to biblical verse, I think it's chapter three, verse 14, they talk about, you know, it's, it's very, everybody should look that up because it talks about the great I am. And I heard somebody giving a breakdown. It was explaining the I am as the AI, basically saying that if we ever get to a point of singularity, right, then that's when the world as we know it will be changed because machines will have so-called consciousness, right? And that's the high level, right? That's the idea of the singularity that people are afraid of, of one day machines ruling man and man creating its own God, right? An artificial God, if you will. Now I bring that up because most people don't realize how much, how artificial the world currently is in its current state from artificial bodies, from artificial food, from artificial insemination, artificial information, right? There are so many things that are artificial today and we're just living in the world of grand illusions at a grand scale, right? Nothing is as what it seems, right? The lack of authenticity is making people jump onto things that have any breath of fresh air of truth in it. And this is why we get to see polarization of figures whether they're good or bad, but when they be themselves and it's authentic and it's true, you see the world grasp onto them. And we see this in the industry today. Now, as I glossed over that, you know, um, thought process, and you can kind of see more on my high level conversation I did for the last two of them. It's, it's, it went deep onto that process, but to kind of go into some tactical and more practical ways of utilizing artificial intelligence and, you know, we can call it AI or we can just call it these tools or these systems, right? Um, because we don't address social media by, you know, ISP or the internet protocol that's behind it. We address it by its use case, right? And I think that that's important to state when we start talking about use case. So for me, the first use case that we talked about was in London at Royal Albert Hall. Um, and this was before anybody was talking about AI. And the reason that I had got on board and was studying it because I was studying generative design, which wasn't even talking about AI, but it was talking about the ability for engineers and, you know, designers to directly work with machines to be able to create designs that normally weren't possible. So I was saying generative AI is going to be the future. And I always like to look ahead when I'm trying to find what the future is. And so now we are in the prompt engineering phase of reality where I believe that the best jobs in the world will be based on prompt engineering and prompt engineering is simply figuring out a way for, you know, you to get the best result from AI once you give it a prompt the same way if you're trying to get the best results out of an employee when you tell them to do something. But the way you tell and the, the clarity of your instructions, right, will be directly in measurement and determination of the results that you get from the people. Right. The same thing with the machines. You have to train them to be effective. Right. And as you're training them to be effective, you're going to get better results. So I utilize ChatGPT a lot, especially these days, because they just upgraded it in multiple different ways. So they have the AI where you can speak directly to it. And this AI is is going to speak directly back to you in a more natural language. So now you can speak to it instead of just type to it. So I can say, hey. I want you to give me an overview on the war. I want you to get an overview on the beginning of the stock market. And it'd be like, sure. And I can tell it how to address me. So it may say, sure, 19 keys. So if you watch, as we talked about yesterday, Iron Man, you know, then you would say they had Jarvis, which was a AI model that was multimodal, meaning that 
It can do multiple things. It can scan the internet, right? It can, you know, create images, videos. It can break down data, right? It can do so many different things. So the world basically has a billion dollar tool in its pocket. But the thing is, is how will you use it, right? So for me, I utilize it in all different ways. And research is one of the number one things. So research with AI, you have to be careful because a lot of people don't like double checking sources whatsoever. So if ChatGPT lies to you, how will you know? Right now, bar AI have what they call AI constitution. This AI constitution has it built into where it will double check itself. And if it does mess up and it glitches or as they call have a mirage or whatever, right, um, then it will go back and it will fix it and give you the correct information. Now, there is a way where you can go into the settings of ChatGPT and do that when you go and customize it. And I always tell it to every time, you know, you do something, I need you to run a report and tell me why this is true. So it, it reinforces the data that it gives me to make sure that it's not giving me incorrect data. Now, there's a this is basically a whole curriculum, just how to utilize ChatGPT within itself. Before we even go to Bard and Claude and all of these other different AI systems and tools that's out there. And the reason I, I'm focusing on just chat and not even the other ones yet, because we are in a deep age of fast consumption. And this yeah. fast consumption got people just jumping on to wave to wave to wave to wave to wave without actually learning how to surf. Right. And so for me, it's about digesting the information, finding the true value. And from there, you can become a true creative. And the true creatives are ones who learn how to use the tools the best way possible not waiting just for instructions, right? When you're waiting for instructions, you have to continuously be handheld and walk through things in order to know what to do next and or you become a carbon copy of the original. So all we see is the same thought process played over and over and over. But when you jump into these systems and you start playing with them and utilizing them, like my brother, um, Mr. Grateful, I was out at the Instagram headquarters with him. And, you know, he had went into the AI and he said, can you give me a strategy for the next six months yeah. on how I can gain 50,000 followers right now? He followed this to the T. Yeah. Right. And to this day, he has, I think, up to like 100 to 200,000. Yeah, 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 he should be like a 150, something like that. And he was so most people don't know. Mr. Grateful was originally working with me and for him. He was doing a lot of the thumbnails and things of nature behind the scene. He had no following whatsoever. Right. So maybe like a thousand, two thousand followers. So he directly correlates his whole entire following and the strategy and the implementation of it from utilizing this tool that is AI. Right. In its correct manner. And this is why I told him early on, I said, listen, AI is, you know, a tool my formula for AI is AI plus EI. Right. Um, artificial intelligence. No, AI plus NI equals EI. Artificial intelligence plus natural intelligence equals enhanced intelligence, right? So he took ideas that he already had existing, took this billion dollar tool, and then he utilized that in order to create a plan of implementation so he can have a framework of execution. So therefore, he'd been winning. And now he, he, he in his second phase of AI teaching them how to get six figures, and he was able to do that. So while a lot of people plan with these tools, there are a lot of people who are actually utilizing it to make money and yeah. create greater business efficiencies and practices. People are losing their job, not because they have to, but because a lot of people won't utilize the AI to replace the services that they do, which means that you should be able to render services faster and or cheaper. Right. But when you're charging people the same amount and it takes you less time to do the work and you're not adjusting your prices, and then a person goes on and they type them a prompt and they like, wait a minute, I was able to get this done. And I'm thinking about all the money I can save. Then, of course, I'm going to decrease that overhead by getting rid of you. And then in the future, I may just hire somebody that can do that for me. Or AI may be trained so well that it knows me. So when I tell AI to do something, they know exactly the parameters in which I want it done. So I don't need the full stack of services from people because they have skill sets that I don't have. Yeah. So. The time that we're living in with the AI right now is a time where, you know, you have the smartest people in the world working for you, but you have to learn how to tell them what to do and to manage the services of these skill sets. 
I, I know I've asked you this before, but do you think prop engineering for this era is going to be as important as coding in the early 2000s? More important. Um, way more, way more, because prompt engineering is in more than just technology, right? So when you're talking about coding, typically you're talking about somebody rendering services for a website, for some engineering, back-end stuff. Prompt engineering goes into all fields, yeah. whether you are in fashion, whether you are in business, whether you are in food, right? You can go and generate recipes. The prompt engineering goes into politics. It goes into almost every single field, right, that we have currently today. So prompt engineering is another way of saying I can manage these skills for you, right? I can manage these services for you. And if you really want to become good at it, like learning different, like even if I go on there and I want to get certain things done, it's, it's really a, uh, you know, a process to get the best results out of AI, right? Because I can say, hey, design me a flyer for a thumbnail. And then it can design me anything based on it having access to billions of metrics of art direction that it can go. But when I can give it direction, I can say, I need you to do a 16 by 9 dimension. I got this. Uh, let me show you all this book I got in front of me. So this big book of graphic design. <laughs> right? So... I can go into this big book of graphic design and I can go look at different graphic artists from different eras. They have different styles. And based on knowing the art direction of those styles, I can tell ChatGPT to make something similar and or inspired by. That's so great. now it's getting closer to what's in my mind's eye and it can bring it out. Right. But if I don't study this, then I don't have the framework and the references. Right. To know what to do. Now, AI at one point in time is going to get so good. You say, AI, can you give me different art directions and give me names. So when I give you directions, you and me are on the same page. Like you're going to be able to talk to AI like that. But for now, in the early stages, yeah. right, prop engineering is so important because the owner of the business don't want to have to deal with the AI themselves. Real Keys, one, one of the most important parts uh, of AI is going to be the data storage, right? In order to have prompt engineering, you have to have somebody prompting and you have to keep feeding the tool, feeding the tool as it learns. It gives you more answers and more responses. I wanted, when, after we spoke yesterday, I started thinking to myself, this feels like similar to a technology that we saw maybe 10 years ago in cryptocurrency, where this technology is new, but the energy that it caused to, I guess, mine was something that people weren't thinking about and how much that caused. Do you think that people, because I'm always looking at how people can implement it and how they can take advantage of it, right? N number one, educate themselves around it. But how can we create careers inside of it? And so, Ian, I'm glad you brought up coding because that's what was being pushed to kids for generations. Yeah. Is it now a, a, a part of us that now we should be looking on data storage? Is it cloud service, AWS, Azure, right? Because ChatGPT is storing all this everywhere, somewhere. Are these are the type of places that we should maybe put our eyes and our focus on? I would say all of them. I mean, any infrastructure around AI is going to be valuable, right? I would say directly as ways to benefit from AI SaaS, so software as services. Um, I would say, like, if just think about the problems that we have within business, right? I had one of my um, coders, and, and, and I don't even, I hate calling him into just like a coder or anything of that nature, but he's really a tech engineer. And one of them was like creating decks for entrepreneurs, right? Where they can type in their ideas or it can scan their different social medias. And the idea was giving the average entrepreneur, right? Access to these tools um, and these business tools that they would need, things that you probably don't learn about a little later into your journey. But it was like, how do we create these softwares that solve problems that we didn't get to solve to later on? Or maybe you didn't have access to the right people, network, right, finances. But it's like when you start thinking about all of the problems we have, think about how you can create an AI tool to solve it, right? Obviously, content creation is such a huge thing. So people went and say, okay, well, I'll do editing software and tools. So now you have all of these editing software and tools, right? People want to add B-roll. So now people are utilizing the text to prompt to create pictures that can coincide with the words that you're speaking. So you can go in and put B-roll inside of your content. So when you're talking about software as a service, it's the same thing with financial literacy. How can you utilize AI to solve the problems of the financially illiterate within the world? 
you all were talking about real estate earlier, right? How can you go on AI and utilize AI as a way to, you know, um, scan whether these are good deals, whether these are transparent or ways that you can audit people if you want to. It's going to be much harder in the future to scam because AI is going to be right there as an assistant helping you along throughout whatever process and for whatever question that you have. There's literally going to be an AI for everything. Yeah. And I don't believe like besides ChatGPT and like Bard and a few other ones that's out there, none of them have really such a big brand name that they get to be the Coca-Cola of AI. That means that all of this is up for grabs and meaning that you don't have to be the coder. You have to be the one with the great idea and the execution. Right. So that means that now you don't even have to have ever been in tech. But if you can think about an issue that's in your service, in your industry. Right. And you can fund the creation of that tool to solve that problem. Then you can start bringing in traffic and making money now. Right. So for this space, I would considerably just looking at how do I solve problems and how do I use this to this new technology to solve problems?